Willkommen zurück, which is German for welcome back to America's funniest handyman. My name is Klaus von Hoogland and I am Tommy's cousin, the cousin of America's funniest handyman. Maybe I am Germany's funniest handyman. I don't know. Either way, today we are here to teach you how to make in the pocket screw joinery. How to make in the pocket screw holes without using a jig like the ever so popular and handy Craig jig or perhaps the lesser known but also useful drill meister. So when we talk about pocket screws, we talk about precision. And when we talk about precision, everybody thinks of Germany, yeah? Of course, everybody knows that German engineering is responsible for some of the world's finest and most precise pieces of machinery, like the Mercedes and the Volkswagen, and the Poodle and the Lederhosen. So today, we will teach you how to be precise without the jig. We will teach you how to be precise with the hand drills and the hand drills only. This is ein Oberhaus Kompetenz in zum Einzimmermann. Which means this is a very and extremely important skill for learning how to do the work of the Finnish carpenter. Achtung, jawohl, mein Publikum. Mein Herr, Cousin Tommy, will come now and give you the instructions. And I will be waiting right over here to add in my mustard to this schnitzel of a DIY. Okay, thank you very much, Klaus. Good to be back here in my shop for another week of pro tips. This is uh, one of the coolest pro tips that I'm going to teach you. The thing that people ask me all the time when they look at some of the stuff that I build is how did you put that together? How did you make those two pieces come together? Yeah. How did you join this to that? In that closet, how did you get that vertical piece? Uh, stationary? How did you secure that particular shelf to the wall? How did you get that trim together? Pocket screws are almost always the answer. And people never know what the hell I'm talking about. In the world of carpentry, the term pocket screw has become a very popularized term that is meant to describe any screw which is countersunk underneath the surface at a very acute angle. And I think we can all agree that 10 or 15 degrees is not only acute, it's adorable. You can see that the head of the screw is hidden down inside this little pocket which we created, or Ein Kleinarbeiter. So as you can see, the term pocket screw can refer to any screw in which you countersink it and install it at a very severe angle at the same time. In the late 80s, a nice guy from Iowa invented a jig to make pocket screwing very uniform. And what it does basically is it just keeps a very specialized drill bit at a certain angle. I'm gonna show you today how to get that same angle using your own drill bits, and we're gonna use some different size drill bits. Uh, using pocket screw joinery is one of those things that will really up your game as a carpenter. Pocket screws, come in very handy if you're out in the field and you don't have a pocket screw jig with you. Or if you're doing funky moldings like this, the jig really isn't gonna fit up against here very well. So today I'm gonna show you how pocket screws can come in handy to join trim together, such as these two pieces of one by four, and also how uh, I use pocket screws quite frequently on the fly uh, to make handrails come together. Uh, sometimes if you're doing handrails, you don't always have the convenience of coming from behind and putting a couple of nice fat screws into it. Sometimes you're up against the wall, as they say. <laughs> you see what I did there? Okay. Um, anyhow, and we will not be using the specialty drill bit and the specialty jig. We're going to freehand this baby. Okay. Oh, ow, damn it. Now I got to come over here and switch sides because over here is my drill kit. You don't have to buy the special pocket screw screws that come with the jig kit. You can use cabinet screws. You can use drywall screws, trim head screws, long lag screws. Anything can be a pocket screw if you know what you're doing. So let's grab some patience and some tools and I'll show you what we need. Okay. Whoa. Ooh, 
Oh, I almost forgot. Don't forget to press the like button and become a subscriber like all the popular people. And if you really want to make us happy, leave a comment and tell us how you feel about this video. And the last but not least, don't forget to visit our new website called America's Funniest Handyman.net. And you can read Tommy's home improvement blog. Isn't that nice? Hey, welcome back. I've got everything laid out that we're gonna need today. Here's an example of what the pocket screw jig makes the pockets look like. They look very uniform, which comes in very handy if you're doing cabinets. Let's say you're doing dozens or hundreds of these type of pocket screw holes. Um, you definitely wanna get the jig. And I recommend picking up one of these jigs anyway. They're not very expensive and learning how to do these can, like I said, it can really open up a whole lot of possibilities uh, for doing cabinetry and doors and stuff like that. And here is what they look like when the screws are installed inside the pocket. As you can see, these flat headed screws get sunk into the other piece of wood and then these disappear under the surface of the piece that you're doing. And then you can either put a plug in there or you can bondo or spackle over it. So I'm gonna show you how to duplicate that hole right now using several different kinds of simple drill bits. You do not need a bunch of really fancy stuff to make these holes. For what we're doing right now, I've got a simple 1 8 inch drill bit and a 3 16 inch drill bit. Whenever I'm doing finish work, trim work, countersink work, I always like to have a couple of these long drill bits in my toolkit just because they come in super handy so that the drill doesn't hit the material when you're coming in at such a severe angle. You do not have to have these because they're a little bit pricey, but they're super handy for doing finished carpentry. And last but not least, I have two countersink bits and uh, a unibit or a step bit. I call it a step bit, but you'll find that people in the trades will sometimes call it a unibit. These countersink bits are good for duplicating this type of hole right here. And believe it or not, one of the best bits that you can use to recreate a pocket like that is the step bit. It works perfect, but you have to be careful not to drive that end part too far in. All right, I'm gonna attach these two pieces of one by four using these drywall screws. I'm gonna use three screws. I'm gonna show you why I'm using three screws to attach these pieces. And then I'm going to attach this stain grade handrail with these three trim head finish screws. If you take a good look at these trim head screws, they have a very small head, a much smaller head than a regular old drywall screw. And that can come in real handy when you want your screws to disappear after you're done. All right, let's start on the one by since it's a little bit easier. First thing I wanna do is get my small bit out. Now, right now it's a good idea to mark where I want these guys to end up. So just for practice sake, I'm gonna mark these like that and like that. And then I'm gonna flip it over and mark one right there in the middle. So I've got a mark here, here, and here. And that mark represents where I want the head of the screw to almost end up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna recreate the severe angle of the pocket screw. I'm gonna come in just a little bit higher than my mark, about a quarter of an inch higher than my mark, and I'm gonna get the drill bit started like that. So now I can actually hold it at an angle and it's not gonna slip and slide around. So I made a nice little dimple of about 16th to an eighth of an inch like that. And then now I'm gonna use that severe angle and I'm gonna slowly, Okay, now this is why you can see that I use the long drill bits. I'm going at such a severe angle and my drill bit isn't all the way through yet. That's why I like using these long drill bits when I'm making these countersink holes. Like I said, you don't have to at all, but it will come out a little bit nicer. So now I'm gonna do the same thing here, about a quarter of an inch up. A little bit of a dimple, come around the other side. And look at my nice severe angle. And then now I'm gonna do the same thing to this hole in the middle. Now, as you can see, I'm very much used to that angle because all three of my holes came out pretty darn close to the center. Now that I have those, three holes. I want to use my K 
countersink. Let's go ahead and use the unit bit. Show you how what a nice pocket hole that makes. Like I said, just have to be careful not to go too far in. Take a good measurement and see, oh, which step? Well, I definitely don't want to go any further back than that when I'm getting down to the base of the pocket. Okay? Swing the hammer, turn the screw, cut the saw and stick the glue. Shave the shim, clamp the vise, cut once, measure twice. Drill the hole and fill the hole, put the thingy in the hole. Be sure you're having fun, measure twice, cut once. Not even using glue right This is what you would use if, let's say, you needed to splice two boards end to end, or let's say you needed to attach two pieces of trim together. So I've done these two on this side. And just like the drill bit being long, you want a nice long driver bit. So now I'm just gonna push. Oh, and the other thing I did wanna mention real quick, this hole right here, right now, is just a little bit small for me because what happens is I'm gonna go ahead and use those small holes. This hole is smaller than the screw, so what it's gonna do is as I'm driving it, I'll show you it'll push the board away. See that? It's walking the board away from itself. So whenever you're doing toe screws and pocket screws, that was a 1 8 inch hole. Now I'm gonna move up to a 3 16 inch hole. And I did the 1 8 inch hole so I could show you how the board will walk if you pre-drill pre too small a hole on that side. And also, as you can see, I'm not pre-drilling anything on this side because I'm, right now I'm doing poplar, and poplar will just accept the screw without any arguments. So now that I've got it started, I'll bring the board back to myself. And see how tight that just pulled that board in. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And as you can see, I didn't come out flush, but that's easy with these pocket screws to adjust just by loosening it up a tad and then reinstalling it. Okay, and now I'll show you why I made that third hole, because when you're doing pocket screws, if you can get more than one screw and they're coming in at opposing angles, it really like double or triples the strength of the joint itself. If you have two screws going in the same direction, that's not nearly as strong as having two screws in the opposite direction or three or four screws all working in opposite directions. So now I'll go ahead and install this last one. And on this one, why don't we use a different countersink and you can see the different type of hole that ends up happening. Okay. More. Just go a little bit deeper. You can see I still have more than a half an inch. Now that's a different shape hole, but it's deep enough to hide the head of my screw. All right. And then that is a pretty darn strong joint. It's not perfect by any means, but I just did this real quick on a fly without any clamps, without any vices, and it still came out pretty darn good, don't you think? And imagine what you could do if you took a little bit more time and perhaps used a clamp to keep things together and nice and flush. And like I said, this isn't the perfect method for doing a pocket screw. The jig is the perfect method for doing the pocket screw. But if you don't have the jig, and if you're working on things that nobody's ever gonna see, sometimes making it come together is the best thing that you can do. Now I'm gonna show you on some oak, which is a little bit more challenging. Oak is definitely has more challenge. So first thing we want to do is make a nice small hole. And when you're doing handrails, I try to stay away from doing anything up here at the top because it's just so obvious. Nobody ever really looks underneath right along this area or along the bottom. So let's just get our first screw right about yay. Let's say it's about an inch, inch and a quarter from the edge. All right, so as you can see, I'm at a nice angle. Okay, that's one. Same thing over here. 
on this side. And the reason I'm doing this, like I said, is I'm gonna get three different screws coming at three different angles, which will take our joint into a much stronger base. I mean, obviously you would not typically wanna use a small two and one quarter trim head screw to install a handrail, but there are times where you literally have no other option besides charging the customer a small fortune to rip apart their walls. And not all customers have that kind of dough, all right? So this is a good way to save your customers some money and still come out with a nice strong handle, okay? Okay, you can see where my holes came out on this bottom, and then I'm gonna do one more on the very bottom. I used the small drill bit for accuracy. Now I'm gonna take a slightly larger drill bit. That was a 1 8 inch drill bit. Now I'm gonna take a 3 16 inch drill bit and I'm gonna make these holes just a little bit bigger. That hole, now I do not need a countersink when I'm doing trim head screws because you want that trim head screw to come down inside the oak and stop itself as soon as it gets in there. So these holes are perfect for the size of the screw, but will not allow the head to come through, okay? But let's say I wanted this handrail to come out in a certain exact spot, which you almost always do, right? You always want things to come out in an exact spot. So I would mark the sides and the top to make sure everything's nice and even. And then what I do is I take my little drill bit, my smaller drill bit, and I come back and I make my pilot holes, all right? Now in this situation, I'm gonna allow these screws to come all the way through the back of this board just so you can see what they end up like. So I'm gonna get my guy in perfect position. Everything on the handrail is pre-drilled. And now I'm gonna use this smaller drill bit, which is smaller than the threads on this screw. I'm gonna drill into the oak. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install my screws. Okay, that just disappeared. And just for accuracy's sake, now I'm gonna make the last hole. Put my third screw in. And there you go. You can see them all coming out the back at different angles, in different spots. But since I'm attached to a nice solid piece of oak, and I used oak, you can see that all of these pockets came out relatively small and will be touched up nicely with some plastic wood or the wood putty of your choice. And that, my friends, is freehand pocket screwing just for you. Have fun with this one. Learning how to freehand these pocket screws without a jig is one of those things that's just going to come in super handy for you around the house or on the job site. Hey folks, thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next week. As always, thanks for letting us bring a whole lot of experience and a little bit of humor onto your job site. Fixing stuff in a serious way. Not so serious guy. Dankeschön und das Glück mit das Taschenschrauber. Auf Wiedersehen.